All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today, uh, our topic is about something in the news, and uh, you know, uh, usually I don't talk about uh, news because I mean, there's nothing really to talk about. And our news today is no different, except it's just showing the hypocrisy in the Muslim world. You know, uh, uh, this is an actor or an actress from Turkey. And she said, uh, regarding the punishment of death, about uh, rape, that if this punishment is going to stop criminals from raping women uh, then how come Mecca or Medina have the highest rate in the world for rape and because she said that the uh, the Gestapo of Erdogan going after her because now she insulted Allah you know, in a Muslim country, anything you say, do anything. As an example, if you go and watch any Turkish TV, TV, what do you see? You see naked women, not only wearing bikini, wearing nothing. I remember in the Middle East, there's a TV station. Um, when I was a kid, you know, and we received the first time something is called satellite. So we start exploring, you know, the, the, the TV stations around us. Actually, this is, was not even a TV. You can receive it in the antenna. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> especially in summertime, because the broadcast can go really far. Uh, there was a TV station. It's called Showtime, something like this. And they have a program. It's called Tutti Frutti. It's called what? Tutti Frutti. Now, nothing changed in Turkey. Tutti Frutti is there. And tutti frutti simply is a is a you know is a very garbage show. Very very garbage, where like you they play a game and then you take off your clothes and it's not that supposedly it's not porn it's an entertainment for a, a, a Thursday before a, like Friday night or Thursday night. Uh, if you go now to Turkey, if you search right now beach in Turkey. Night club in Turkey, uh, Istanbul, Ankara. Just search, you will find that Turkish they have nothing to do with this now. Their women almost wearing nothing on the beach. Go and watch Turkish so songs. You know, I, I I wish I can play for you, but you know they will they will play uh, the game of copyright. So all of this did not make the Muslims upset, did not make Erdogan upset. Night clubs, whiskey, take a beer, alcohol, prostitution, prostitution, you know, the, the, one of the major businesses in, in Turkey. I remember once I installed uh, an, uh, an app. I forgot the name of the app, you know. It's like, uh, you know, uh, I wanted to post about my videos there. And I searched for Turkey. So I will like, it's like, you know, Twitter, but it's not a Twitter. So I searched Turkey because it's a Muslim country. And supposedly I will post there a link about my book or my videos. And then you, when you search Turkey, you don't find any normal Turkish people. You find only prostitutes showing their face and they are totally naked and they have their phone number there and that is not making anyone upset but you make a comment about al medina this is a red line i mean how dare you prostitution drugs mafia scam you know I remember a guy he told me uh, what happened to their car they parked their car in the street and they went inside the restaurant now the car is not really close to the restaurant but they can see it 
and look like those guys the the, the the one who thieves they knew that they are watching their car so what they did they took the tires from the other side of the car so when the guys they went from the restaurant they did not find the two tires from the other side of the car it's gone it's gone imagine how professional they are this is a Turkey this is a country which big time screwed and the only worry their economy is collapsing their lira have no value there is no businesses there is no jobs there is no and there is no problem in the world except that this woman now she made a statement in a Twitter insulting the Prophet but she did not mention the name of the Prophet oh no she did she did she said if the punishment of death will stop people from rape then why in Al Medina or in Mecca rapist is a flourishing but I I think she is ignorant somehow because there is nowhere in the Quran saying that if somebody he rape a woman he should be killed the Quran mentioned the punishment of fornication and fornication in Islam is the only thing is known the God of Islam he have time to speak about the flying carpet he have time to tell us about the ant speaking to Suleiman the chicken who they joined his army captain chicken KFC uh, uh, you know uh, the genies who die for Suleiman to bring to, to bring him pearls and diamonds and all of those things but he don't have time to make a one verse on the Quran to punish the rapist so what is the punishment for rapist in Islam and why this woman she made the Muslims upset when she said that if punishment of death how come is going to help how come in the Medina or in Mecca they have the highest rate of rape actually not only rape I mean you see in in Saudi Arabia a woman she cannot walk alone in the street for a reason did you ask yourself why a woman she is not allowed to walk alone in the street if a woman walk alone in the street she will be arrested but there is a reason the reason is this cult this religion because of it women became in danger so if she walk alone she became a target and the reason is simple because this religion is taking over the country women and men they are separated young men in the street they cannot talk to girls and then finally they see a girl alone what do you expect to happen you can go right now to youtube and you will see i'm not exaggerating you know a couple of thousands following a girl in the street just because she's walking alone thousand thousand i'm not talking about hundreds and not i'm not exaggerating you can go right now and search for it this religion because of the nature of it it make women as have one one image only one one status one position that which is sexual so when they see a woman in the street they don't see her as a human being they see her as a sexual object she is a walking talking vagina as simple as that Additional to this, how I can see a woman to be something not sexual if all the religion of Islam is based on sexuality? Heaven is about what? Is about sex, and what sex in heaven? Who is the one who is re who is rewarded, and who? What is the reward? If you look at the rewarded and the reward, you will understand right away what the sex involvement there. The rewarded are the men; the reward is the women. So Islam make every Muslim believe that women are a reward of sex, not love. So because I'm praying to Allah, because I do jihad, because I join ISIS, because I join Al-Qaeda, because I kill myself, Allah will give me a reward. What is the reward? Sex. So how you want this cult to think of a woman in a higher position 
not to be just sexual you know nothing wrong by the way men or women they are made this way God he made us male and female so he made us with sex so sex is not the problem so what the problem the problem is you cannot look at a human being without being sexual heaven is about sex God is about sex why a Muslim he want to go and join jihad what is the what is the real purpose just to go to heaven well I okay I will live my life there now I pray to Allah and later he would take me to heaven why I need to go and kill why I need to do to 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 die because he promised them that the reward of those who die for the sake of Allah is bigger and what is the bigger reward is sex a lot more women if you have my book then you the last one uh, Allah and sex you will you will you will find tons of reference about what we are talking about this religion it is 100% sexual religion there is nothing in it except sex even when you live in this earth Islam is only about sex a man he can have four women with him okay can a woman have four men no why the Muslim will say to you how we will know who is the father aha uh -huh, this is solved now we have no problem you can do a little DNA test and you can find who is the father that is not a problem so can we have one woman with four men no way Muhammad he made the Muslims and he made verses that any Muslim man he can enjoy their slaves they can sleep with their slaves a Muslim woman she decided to do that Muhammad he put her to death but the Quran says whatever you own your right have possess oh Muhammad he did not mean the women they can do that only men they can do that for this is a religion made by the man for the benefit of the man the women are not counted to be the beneficiary of this religion the women are the reward even Muhammad because he is a perverted minded person and all his mind is about sex not only he promised them women in heaven he promised them women they are created for sex what is the purpose of those women to be created all of you heard about something called whore what is whore What is whore? Hurun Maksuratun Filchiam, Chapter Fifty Five, Verse Number Seventy Two. What is that exactly? What is the problem? Women, they are jailed in their tents for you. And look how the Muslim they translate fair ones. What fair ones? What do you mean fair ones? What? What fair ones? Change the translation. You will find the translation come with something different. In the heaven, my friend, there is women, they are waiting for you in their tents, ready for action.
false translation again. I cannot find any any Muslim giving a correct translation, honestly. Let us go to this website here. Maybe we can find something. Maybe. <clears throat> We will try to go to five five seventy two, maybe seventy. Let us start uh, one by one. Oh, let us go to translation. Hold on. Let us go to 56 first. Those women, not only they are jailed in their rooms, but I have a good news for you. Do you see what is the news? In those tents, we have women who they are jailed. They cannot even take a peek out of their tents. They cannot see other men. This is what it means, restraining. What is What we are talking about here that those women are created for your majesty so you enjoy them no one can be competing with you women those women they cannot even see additional men they are the only champion you are the only hero in the bedroom so allah will restrain them for you and you are wondering why this religion is all about rape isn't it this is a rape when you bring thousands of women and put them in my tent and you say those are yours what is that do you think really those women they will be happy to sleep with this guy i mean where is the where is the equality of at least make it one to four as you did in the earth what about we make it one to four? No, in the heaven, one of the hadith says you will have 80,000 female. For sure, this is the bend in your performance in the earth. If you join Al-Qaeda, you will get more women. If you join ISIS, you will get even more devil. So women, they are restrained in their tents. And I have a good news for you. Nobody put his... You know, I mean, do you see it? I'm, I'm not going to read it. I mean, what kind of God he say that? I remember uh, Ahmad Didat, he was speaking about uh, the Song of Songs, which is a song made by a king. And it's a metaphorical. Speaking about this book is a porn. Do you, do you really, don't you feel ashamed to read this uh, chapter for your children? Don't you, Christians, Jews, don't you? But that, that guy, he was not making a point for children, you idiot, first. Secondly, it was a king making a point. It's not God talking. Number three, it's not really about sex. This is how he imagined the city. This is how he described his city. Now we are talking about your God talking, not a man making poetry, not a man making meditation. God making a point 
and this point is so clear I will bring you tons of thousands of women made for sex nothing else they have no jobs except sex they will not cook they will not clean they will not do anything all day long just being naked and they are restrained they can't even take out go outside to the yard to 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 uh, to take to breathe no no they are restrained in their tents and they never been used their vagina is a brand new as you see i mean i was worried that you go to heaven and then you find women they are been used before i mean this is a big worry for allah no allah he know what what the arab want the arab they are possessed with versions because that will make the man feel he is the macho man i am the man there's no other man here and not only that the god of islam he promised them that each time you sleep with those women if you have my book again you can go and check the reference each time you sleep with those women which is supposedly the virgins allah he will make them virgin again you see the obsession with the virgin idea i mean obviously this is not about being virgin no more this is about madness because i just stepped with the women a minute ago so you make her version again for what purpose the god of islam he knew that those arab men muhammad and his followers they have a fantasy and the fantasy is to see a woman in pain when she is having sex first time so allah will repeat the pain you sleep with her first time allah make a version again you sleep with her second time allah make a version again you it's a, ver, a, a version again and again and actually there is a product in in the, in the middle east very famous made in china it's called version again because what Muslim girls do, they go sleep around all their life, and then when they want to get married, they don't want the husband to know that they are, you know. So what they do, they buy the virgin again a product, or they make a little surgery to make herself virgin. So not only this God promising us that we will have a woman they've been not touched by men. No, 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 even genie did not sleep with them. What are you talking about, genie? Yes, the Muslims believe that genie they sleep with their women, and the Quran mentioned that that the shaitan and his the genies they will they will share with their women and their and their, and, and their seeds. So the Muslims believe that. Genies and shaitan can sleep with your wife. If you remember uh, the story of Suleiman, where Suleiman, when he went to the bathroom, and then shaitan he came and he took, uh, he asked, he he took the look of Suleiman. He asked the wife of Suleiman to give him the ring, and this is the ring of the the the, the same as the, in the movie, the the Lord of the Ring, the Holy Putter. So shaitan he took the ring, he put it in his hand, and after he wore the ring, shaitan became the king. And he kicked out Suleiman from the palace and then Suleiman he was working as a putter You know, he carries stuff for people in the street A putter for the for like, you know carry stuff for you poor guy And the story says that Suleiman he was like this for a while maybe a few years and uh, the wives of the shaitan they noticed that their, their, their husband, which is Suleiman in this case, he is so powerful in sex, which is unusual. So the Muslims, they learned from their prophet that shaitan sleep with women. Shaitan have sex even with the wives of their prophet. Because remember, the Muslims believe that Suleiman is a prophet of Allah. I mean, what kind of God is God who will allow shaitan to sleep with my wife? If, if we ask the Muslims do you think Allah will allow shaitan to sleep with Aisha they will kill you if you say that what are you talking about you are insulting the prophet wife what are you talking about okay hold on 
So how shaitan he slept with the wives of, of Suleiman? Not one wife, all of them. And how the wives they noticed that this is gonna be Suleiman. It was how powerful he is in bed. This guy, like, like a gun machine. So they complained to the elders and they told them something wrong with our husband. He cannot be he the same person. They said, Why? They told them he is so good in bed. I mean, we cannot even stop him. And Suleiman, according to Muhammad, he have 99 goats, which means 99 wives. Okay. So now he have 99 goats and he sleep and the shaitan is sleeping with all of them and they cannot satisfy him. And now the wives, they notice that this is can't be the husband. So they told the older, the elders. Now in the other side, Suleiman is a homeless person now and he is working to carry stuff in the market like you buy some grocery I carry it for you you give me some pennies or some food so according to the Muslim story Suleiman maybe I should show that in the screen should I find the story if somebody have the story before from from uh, what we said before uh, pause the link please save me from looking uh, so Suleiman he carried the fish for a guy a guy he bought fish Suleiman, he approached him. He said to him, uh, how much you pay me if I carry the fish for you all the way to your home? The guy, he said, I will give you a fish. I think it's a fish or two in the story. Suleiman, he said, okay, good, no problem. The poor Suleiman, he carried the fish in his head all the way to the house of this guy. When they arrived there, the guy, he keep his promise. He gave him a fish. Suleiman now is so happy. He went to where he lived. Let us say he lived a homeless and there somewhere. He cleaned the fish, and while he was cleaning the fish, he found the ring. Now, how the ring get inside the fish? Anyone knows? When the wives of Suleiman, they discovered that this is not Suleiman, and they reported the story to the elders. The elders they kicked Shaitan out of the kingdom. Shaitan, he knew that this ring is powerful. So he decided now to throw it in the ocean. And it happened out of the three, five billion, billion, the trillion the, the, the fish in the world, in the ocean, that the fish which the guy he gave Suleiman is the one who swallowed the ring. It happened. It happened all the time. It's a true story. I mean, who can oppose this story? None of the Muslims want to sue Muhammad for making fun of them, lying about fictions, making it about God. But this woman who said what she said in Twitter is a problem. I mean, where is the Muslims? Where is the Muslims? Aren't you upset from your prophet saying that Shaitan step with the wives of Suleiman. Aren't you upset from making fun of you that Shaitan he took a ring and he wore it and became a king? Do you really believe that if you wear a ring you control the world? And you are talking about Hori, Hori Potter? How come you must not believe Hori Potter is a fiction but you don't believe on what Muhammad he said? And not only that, when Suleiman he died, when Suleiman he died, he died standing. Have you ever heard of somebody die standing? Yes, he died standing, my friend. Why and how he died standing? The secret is here. When Suleiman died, he was standing holding his stick, and because he's holding his stick, he was standing still. I mean, obviously, it's a true story. And his ministers, his wives, they come to his room, they speak to him, he don't answer. Nobody noticed that this guy is dead because he looked like he's like look look fine. He's not just answering. So imagine a guy is dead for a long time. 
and nobody noticed that he is dead standing I mean have you ever heard of something somebody dies standing and why he dies standing because he have a stick in his hand I mean come on use your logic and then how they notice that he is dead anyone remember anyone remember how the people they notice that the king is dead finally the termite start eating the stick look like this wood is not a treated in home depot i mean i advise him next time to buy a treated wood so the termite eat the stick and then the stick broken so Suleiman fell down and this is how they knew that this guy is dead and this is a true story Erdogan investigators will not investigate how legitimate the stories of Muhammad but he want to investigate a tweet of a woman saying how come there's a lot of rape in the city of Medina when the Muslims are going to start investigating is it going to happen you want to investigate someone said something you want to shut them up this is the whole idea they want to harass this woman maybe they can take her to jail so they will show anyone if you try ever to say something against Islam we will take you to jail let me see if I can find the story of Suleiman in English that will be nice but i doubt we can find it in english yeah let us do this um. Okay, maybe we can fight in English in Ibn Kathir. Let us see if that will work. You know what I mean? Let us see if that will work. Hold on. I'll try to find Ibn Kathir. Because remember, the Muslims, they will say to you, you're a liar. I mean, you know it. Uh, you know, you know, you know, like from now what they will say, right? I mean. Uh. Let us go here first. Let us go to Ibn Kathir, chapter 38, verse number 34. I, I don't think they will translate this to English, but we will try. Because in Arabic book, it exists. Exist. In the Arabic book, it is exist. You know? 38, 34. Take note for the one is asking. Okay. Okay, here we go. This is Ibn Kathir. Let's see if we can find the details of uh, of what happened about Suleiman uh, die standing and how. Uh, And what happened exactly? Okay. So here it says, and we we place him on his throne, Jasadan, a body. Thumma anab, and he returned. What he returned mean? Means after he, uh, this test, he turned back to him and asked him for forgiveness. So Allah, He made him lose his kingdom. 
So now Suleiman is asking Allah for forgiveness. And he said to him, Oh Allah, forgive me and bestow upon me a kingdom such as uh, shall not uh, belong to any other af after me. Verily, you are the best doer. So some of them said, no one after me will have the right to ask Allah for such a kingdom. No one after him. That's it, guys. Uh, Suleiman he asked Allah not to give this kingdom like his kingdom to anyone except him. And Allah is he made a deal with him. The Muslim he is trying to explain why nobody after that have such a thing. Like all these fictions about Suleiman. This is an apparent meaning from the context of Allah, and several hadith with a similar meaning have been narrated from the Messenger of Allah and his tafsir of the ayah. In Al Bukhari, it's reported, okay, Al Bukhari, as long as Al Bukhari he said that, no problem. And Afrit, anyone knows what Afrit means? Afrit is a genie, is a bad genie. Afrit among the jinn came, he's a shaitan, but he's like uh, the guy who jump a lot. You know, this is what Afrit is like, this is Afrit. He's a genie, he's a shaitan. But he is a bad boy, very bad. Like you are praying, he jump in the front of you, he jump in your shoulder, he starts saying la 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 la. I will not let you pray. And and now the, the afrit is coming to the Prophet Muhammad, and this is a true story. I mean, I want you to take a note that this is absolutely true story. There is no need for the Turkish government to investigate how legitimate Muhammad is saying this story. This is a true story. I mean, how you can reject such a story? So Muhammad was a praying and the Afrit from among the jinn came and bothered me last night. Last night, huh? this is Muhammad is talking, this is fresh news. This is last night, not like last year. This is last night, brother, brother, this is last night. Last night, last Christmas, you gave me your heart. And this story here is different. Last night, a genie come to me and he jumped on me and he said, la, 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 la. This is last night. Or he said something similar, trying to stop me from praying. Look how disgusting this genie is. Allah enabled me to overpower him. It's a karate match. The genie want to stop the prophet. Allah empowered the prophet. And now look what happened. And I wanted to tie him to the one of the pillars of the masjid. Like what? Muhammad, he empowered, which means now he's holding the genie in the floor. The same as you see fighting in the cage, you know, like those fighters. So now the, the, the prophet, he hold the genie under his feet and he's putting his arms around his neck. And the, 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 uh, the guy in the stage is saying, one, two, three, we have a winner. Prophet Muhammad, he won. Yeah, he, so now he overcome him and he was able to overpower him. And now the genie is down in the ground. And he wanted the prophet to tie him up to the column. What? He want to do what? He want to tie him up. Prophet, are you sure? Yes, I want to. Muslims, how you say to us that a genie can transform himself to be a snake? He can transform himself to go even through the walls. He can round himself around your penis and you don't feed him. He can come to you in any shape he wants. Even the story says that genies and shaitan they came to Muhammad as an angel to breathe. So now, how you can tie in up? How you can tie up something is a transformer. Anybody can tell me. You know what I mean? If this person of this creature he can transform his body to anything, so how you can tie him up? Let it go. Are you investigating now? Let it go. Muhammad is talking. I mean, don't take it serious. And look what Muhammad said. I wanted to tie him up in one of the pillars of the masjid. So in the morning, brother, you can see him. What? What? What the purpose of tying up? Not to stop because he is stopping him from the prayer. No, not to kill him. No. He want to show him. He want to show his friends in the morning how the genie look like. Finally, we will see a genie. Finally, first time in history, we are going to see a genie in person. And Muhammad, now he captured one. And then his friend yesterday, I arrested him. Okay. Then, look what happened. I mean, look what happened, man. Then I remembered. 
my brother Suleiman said my lord forgive me and bestow upon me a kingdom such as shall not belong to other after me but what this have to do with you Muhammad is holding a genie is going to make you having a kingdom like Suleiman and let us say Suleiman he made a prayer like this so what does have to do with this why you don't want to show us the genie because you are a liar so Muhammad now he remember that Suleiman he said such a statement which have nothing to do with the topic so he let him go guys yesterday actually before I start broadcasting and this is between me and you I got a Trump in my kitchen and he was trying to eat my yogurt I put him in the floor I sit in the top of him I hold him from his hair his blonde hair and I was saying to him I will not let you go and then I remembered then I remembered my brother he said that we need to make America great again so I said to myself my brother Suleiman he said let us make America great again so I have to let the Trump go true story I mean your followers are desperate to find and to see finally for the first time in their life a genie and now you let him go I mean cannot even you hold him for five minutes until they, they arrive and then let him go anyway no no no. we don't have a Skype on no, we don't have a Skype on I'm, I'm not going to take Skype call I don't, I'm not in the mood to talk I'm busy with the Trump now because I am so upset from Trump taking my yogurt but because he's you know I heard that we have to make a great again America great again so you know I have to let him go uh, last time we have a broadcast not yes uh, by the way I have a video I made a video early morning today all of you you were asleep snoring Alhamdulillah and maybe most of you did not watch it so don't forget to watch it it's called about it's about is an ish uh, what is the name of the video Ishmael was an Arab answering the ignorant Christians and yes whoever believed that Ishmael was an Arab he's an ignorant Christian now here there's a lot of evidence that this story is true number one there is no witnesses number two obviously Muhammad he don't want to have witnesses because he let the, the genie go and this is make the story very authentic because anything you you say and you have no witnesses for it it's mean obviously it's true You Muslims required two witness for uh, for borrowing money. Borrowing money, you need two witnesses. A guy he became a prophet. Shouldn't we have two witnesses for what he claimed? How come this guy he have never never have a witness? Jibril come, Jibril go, Jibril come in the image of Dahi al Kalbi Ibn Abbas. He entered the cousin of Muhammad when he was young. He entered the room and he saw. Muhammad and Dahya Kalbi in a special position. So Ibn Abbas he said to him, Isn't it this is Dahya? He said that the Prophet now he wanna he wanna explain why this guy is late at night in his house. Obviously, there's something fishy. In case you do not know, Dahya Kalbi is the most handsome young man in Mecca. He is not just a guy, he is the most handsome. And now he found him in the house of the Prophet. And in according to the story, it says in a special, you know, like uh, position. They don't explain what is that exactly. Like you know, they are supposed to meditating together. Maybe they are naked together. I don't know. So Ibn Abbas he said, and then Muhammad he said to uh, Dahya, go go go. So Ibn Abbas he said, uh, the guy who just left now, don't don't he he look like Dahya Kalbi? Is is he Dahya Kalbi? The Prophet said. Yes, he looked like Dahi al Kalbi, but this is Jibreel. Like, what? He looked like Dahi al Kalbi, but this is Jibreel? Do you think that Trump, when he came yesterday to me to steal my yogurt, he is Jibreel too? But you look like Trump? I mean, it's possible. And why Jibreel when I take the look of Dahi al Kalbi? Anybody can tell me he's out of options? Jibril, he was thinking, 
I will come to Muhammad in which look in which look and which look I mean a cloning is very popular in Islam Allah he made someone look like Jesus the white the, have you ever heard about the white white shaitan if you have my book you will see it white shaitan what is the white shaitan shaitan in Islam is a black he's not white Shaitan in Islam is black, always is black. Even Muhammad he said, if you see a black dog, kill him, for he's a shaitan. So how became how how the angel became uh, how shaitan became white? Simply what they say that the shaitan he made himself white to look like he is the angel Jibreel and he used to come to Muhammad. Unbelievable. True story. What do you think about those stories? And then here we continue with Suleiman. You see that like Islam is very complicated and connected. Stories will take you to many stories. Now Muhammad is telling what happened between him and the shaitan. Look what happened to him. Genie the Afrit is trying to jump in the face of Muhammad, making la 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 la. And now Muhammad he hauled him, and then he said. I seek refuge with Allah from you. Then he said, which means the prophet, I curse you with the curse of Allah. Ew, look at the punishment, guys. Look at this. Things is getting serious. Muhammad now is upset from shaitan. He said to him, I curse you with the curse of Allah. What is that curse of Allah? You will make him a fish? The last time as I remember, Allah, he cursed the Jews. He made them pigs and monkeys. What you made him? He's a shaitan already. What are you talking about? I mean, what curse is going to work in anyone more than being a shaitan? I curse you, what he will do, what he will go, what he will become. He's a shaitan. I curse you. I thought shaitan is cursed already. A knife is it challenging me to debate? Where is Mr. Knife? Give me one, Mr. Knife, so I can see you. Where is Knife? Do you want to call me Knife? If you want to call me, I will open Skype only for you do you want to call me naive just for you do you want to do it or no well look like he is playing dead now <clears throat> anyway forget about him and then guys Look what happened. He stretched out his hands. What, what? He stretched out his hands as if he was reaching out to take something. Who is the one stretching out his hands? Anyone knows? Guys, who is the one who stretched his hand? Muhammad. And this is a clear sign that this man is a madman, is a crazy man. There's nothing in front of him. There's nothing in front of Muhammad. He sees something nobody see. So he stretched out his hand as if he want to take something, which means he want to grab something. And now this is Muhammad seeing the genie, the afrit, the shaitan. When he finished the prayer, so the Muslims, they saw him. The Muslims, listen carefully. Muhammad is praying. Muslims are around him. They heard him saying, I curse you. I curse you with the curse of Allah. But there's nothing inside in front of him. There's nothing. And he said that three times. You remember, guys, the three times? Do you see the word three times? You see the that he says to me when we pray, we don't start with the three times? I, 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 I pause the hadith there. You can go read it. Muhammad, when he starts the prayer, he starts by saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, three times. So are you saying your prophet wasn't a Muslim? And here, the shaitan is cursed three times. Why three times? What about once? Ah, first one will not work. Second one, three is the perfect one. Mm. And he stretched out his hands as if he was reaching out for to take something. So Muhammad is reaching out for something, but Muslims still they see nothing. When he finished his prayer, we said, "Oh, Messenger of Allah, we heard you saying something in the prayer." 
which we have never heard you say before. And we saw you stretching out your hands. So the Muslims now they're confused. Why this guy's doing that? He's cursing somebody, stretching his hand as if he want to grab somebody, and they are trying to understand what happened. And look, look what happened. He said, "Who he said? The prophet. The prophet. Now he want to answer from the Quran. You ignorant." He said. The enemy of Allah, Iblis, come with the flame of fire to throw in my face. Look at this shaitan. How disgusting he is. He is trying to burn the beautiful face of the Prophet. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? It must be true story. So nobody saw the flame and nobody saw the shaitan. The Muslims are surrounding Muhammad, but Muhammad, he see this. Only Muhammad. So I said, I seek refuge with Allah from you three times. Then I said, I curse you with the complete curse of Allah. Complete curse. Ah, you see now why it's three times? Guys, do you see why it's three times? You remember? He cursed him three times. Why three times? Because this is a complete curse. If it is two times, it's not complete. If it's one time, it's not complete. Three times is the complete curse of Allah. So Islam, everything about it is complete when you do it three times. Uh, Naif is not afraid to call, but his voice is soft. My friend, what do you mean your voice is soft? You remind me of something. Your your God, your prophet said that Allah, he spent 1,000 years to soften the skin of eight women in heaven. Look like Allah, he softened your, your you know, for 1,000 years. What does that mean when my voice is soft? Who is going to ask you if it's soft or not? His voice is soft. He cannot debate me because his voice is soft. Look at this excuse. Anyway, so he cursed him with the complete curse of Allah, but he did not back off. Oops, look like the curse of Allah is not working. Hey, Muslim, do you see it? I'm not the one saying that. Muhammad, he cursed him by Allah three times. I curse you, I curse you, I curse you. Shaitan, he said to him, la 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 la. I mean, who in, who's the crazy here? He cursed him by Allah, the complete curse. He, he just said the complete curse. So what the benefit of the complete curse? Huh? What is the benefit of this complete curse? Shaitan is coming, is not, is not leaving. So look what happened. So I said it, I said it three times. Then I wanted to size him. Hey. Things is getting complicated, hot fight by Allah. If we're not the word of my our brother Sulaiman, he would be chained up. Oof. I mean, this shaitan is so lucky that Muhammad he remember the words of Sulaiman. Take the question. A Muslim, you have a question, my friend. The answer for me is coming from chapter 5, verse 101. Chapter 5, verse 101, it says in the Quran, ask not questions. What's wrong with you? How come you are a Muslim and you're asking questions? Isn't it haram to ask questions in Islam? What's wrong with you? Are you a Muslim or you are a fake Muslim? What kind of a Muslim you are? Why well, you don't follow the Quran? Ask not questions. What's wrong with the Muslims? Unbelievable. We continue. So now, because he remembered the words of Suleiman, Shaitan is afraid. I am sure most of you now is convinced that Muhammad is a true prophet of God. You must be mentally ill not to believe that this is a true story. 
And here Muhammad, he continues speaking, or Ibn Kathir, quoting from Muhammad's statements in the Quran, that Allah, he gave the flying carpet to Sulaiman. So we subjugated to him the winds. It blow gently. I want to have that. I mean, guys, one of the things making me unhappy, I don't have control of the wind. When I start learning English, I learned something, it's called the break wind. I could not understand how you can break the wind, man. I mean, English is really funny sometimes. But look like here, Muhammad was breaking too much wind in his Quran. The wind now is going under the flying carpet of a prophet Solomon. And he is commanding the wind. Hey wind. Go. Carry me. And Suleiman is sitting in the top of the flying carpet with all his kingdom. They want to investigate this woman about what she said about Mecca, but nobody want to investigate if Muhammad is saying the truth. What a hypocrite Muslims you are. Al Hassan al Basri, oh, Hassan al Basri is saying that it must be true. May Allah have mercy on him, said. When Suleiman, peace be upon him, slaughtered the horse out of anger. What horse? Anyone knows what, what horse? Anyone knows what horse we are talking about? What horse are you talking about? Let us see who of you have a knowledge. What horse to a man he slaughtered? Out of anger. Anyone knows? The one with the two wings. Thank you, Viking. Viking, you are hired. We will do Viking together. Halal Viking, jihad. You know, we go to the neighbors, we take their money, we take the blondie girls, we come back. Viking, this is jihad. This is exactly what Islam is about. Now listen carefully. According to Muhammad, Suleiman, one day he got upset. Looked like he was trying to buy some hot tea from the tea machine. And the tea machine did not give him the, pep the Pepsi he is looking for because in Arabia, we order tea, we get Pepsi. So he got upset. He got so upset. And this is very normal for us Middle Eastern. We get so upset for any reason. If there's no reason to get upset, we get upset because there's no reason. Which means there's no need for a reason. So now he got upset. So what he did, he slaughtered his flying horse. His horse have two wings. I mean, are you telling me that Islam is not scientific? Are you telling me that Muhammad here is telling us fictions? Now, all of us, we knew where this story is coming from. You can go and search right now. Search in Google for flying horse with two wings, and you will see that this is all legions. Many nations in the Middle East believe in them. Muhammad, he believed in it, it's true. So Suleiman, he used to have a limousine, and the limousine is a flying horse, so he slaughtered the horse. So what Allah, he did, Allah, he replaced his flying horse with flying carpet. I mean, look about the upgrade he got. From a horse can hold one or two person in the top of it, to a flying carpet can carry all the kingdom of Suleiman. I want to get that. I'm going in a trip, you know, and about two weeks from now, and uh, I want to get the flying carpet. Why I want to pay for a ticket? Uh, by the way, guys, just to remind you, when I am in my trip, I will try to do live broadcast 
but uh, you know I order actually uh, like let's say a portable computer but I'm not sure really if it's going to be good for live broadcasting if it is good then I will do live broadcast during the time I will be uh, abroad if not I will just make videos uh, we ask people to help us but not too many respond to the help so we can get a better computer uh, the story here is very clear and you cannot be a person who can reject such a story unless you have a mental issue this is a true story and it's so clear flying horses is true and they are exist do you already eat pork I mean look at the silly and look at the silly people you know just to show you how stupid a human being a human being he have no problem to watch movies are not legal which means they are hacked they have no problem to steal software they have no problem to do all kind of filth from lying spreading rumors speaking in the back of people but they are worried about if you eat pork or not I mean, do you see what the problem of mankind is? The problem, do you eat pork? If you are looking for a solution for all the problems we have in the world, the problem is beyond imagination. It's about eating pork. If we stop eating pork, all the problems in the world will be solved. Why there's rape? because people eat pork why there's a thieves and criminals because they eat pork i mean isn't it obvious so look how silly a human being and how stupid he is look what we are talking about and look what this guy is talking about i am assuming that he is being serious now do you eat pork He is not wary about his prophet telling all those stupid stories. He is worried if a Christian prince eat pork. And Abdul, who told you that eating pork is forbidden in Islam? Do you want me to prove it to you that you can eat pork? Do you accept the challenge? Silly people, silly. Supposedly, if you eat pork, you are a bad person. Do you eat pork? No, I eat hummus. Does that make me holy? I eat hummus, brother. Hummus. I eat holy hummus every day. Holy hummus is the best. Do you respect me now? Be honest. Let us compare between a person who eat hummus and a person who eat pork. What's wrong with those Muslims? They are not worried about all this garbage in their books. They are worried about me eating pork. Now, if you want to challenge me to prove to you that you as a Muslim, you can eat pork, let me know. And I will show it to you from the Quran. From the Quran. Don't tell me this is weak Quran. What an ignorant people. <clears throat> anyway. Alex is not a Muslim. He's asking questions. So what does that mean? I mean, what, what's wrong with you, Alex? What does this question have to do with my topic? Do you eat already pork? What does that mean? anyway you want to be a christian take my question okay i want to take my qu guys we will take a break we will take the question of mr knife knife give me the question please but be careful when you when you talk to christian prince everything you say is going to be used against you in the court of law give me the question you ask for it don't comp don't cry give me the question
No, he will not call me because his voice is soft, he said. His mom, she said, your voice is soft. You are not qualified to call Christian Prince. Give me the question, man. I'm not going to stop my, uh, you know, for, for 10 hours. Is your question coming? Maybe you are waiting for the inspiration of Jibreel. Okay, when he posed the question, we will answer him. Maybe he is searching the internet. So now here, Suleiman. Genesis chapter 15, verse number 18. So what is your question about Jesus and Muhammad? What does that mean? What does that mean? Explain to me, please. I am I'm not smart like you. What what Genesis 15, 18, what does that have to do about Muhammad or Jesus? What does that mean? Oh, you mean if that verse is about Muhammad? My friend, my friend, everything, every book in the world written is about Muhammad. What are you talking about? I mean, are you kidding me? It must be about Muhammad. Everything is about Muhammad. Uh, Abdul, why do you think that uh, uh, the book of Genesis is speaking about Muhammad? There is something, what's, what's wrong, my friend? What's what the problem? Because by what you just showed, you know, you are, you are saying to me, you are proving to me that you Muslims are desperate and you cannot prove your prophet. So you are looking for a book you hate most. I gave you the land from the river of Egypt into the great river of Euphrates. Is that what your prophet he had? Idiot. Did your prophet have that? Did he have that? No. Do he have it now? No. He never have it before. He never have it now. Same time, what Muhammad have to do with Abraham? Abraham, according to the Quran, he have children, and none of the children have to do with Muhammad. Muhammad supposedly, according to Muslims, is an Arab, and the Muslim believe Arab is an ethnic, which is not true, but we will let it go. Muslims, they say that Muhammad is from Ishmael, but this is absolutely false, because Muhammad is from the tribe of Quraysh. According to Muslim books, yesterday I was making a, you know, a, a, a video about it. According to Muslim books, Ishmael, he did marry from Jerham. And Jerham is the enemy tribe of Muhammad. Actually, the tribe of Muhammad, they kicked the tribe of Jerham from Mecca. Go and read his story. They kicked them out. They are not one tribe. So if this is true that Ishmael he did marry from Jerham, what Muhammad have to do with it? Same time, the Arab was exist in the time. You know, he is he is forcing me to to just make uh, to show him something. Let us do that. No problem. No problem. All right, this is the story about Ishmael. In your prophet words, it says that Ishmael, he learned Arabic at the age, in different story, it says in the age of 11, 14, depend in the story, report. Do you see it? It says, your Islamic resource, not mine. Ishmael, he learned Arabic, which means he is not an Arab. His father is an Aramaic, the mother is an Egyptian, the son is an Arab. This is like saying, a guy, he is Japanese, he married a Chinese, the son was German. 
He learned Arabic. That's mean Arabic is already exist. He married from the Arab. According to you Muslims, that's mean the Arab already is exist. So in order for Muhammad to be the son of Ishmael, he should not be an Arab because if you marry an Arab woman, you are not, your children are not Arab. Your children, they follow you, whatever your citizenship is. In Islam, the, the, the child belonged to his father. This is what the Quran said. The Quran says, وَدْعُوهُمْ By the names, they call them by the names of their father. You cannot call somebody by the name of the mother. There's only one person in Islam have called by the name of his mother, that is Isa, because supposedly he have no father anyway. So when the Muslim try to find their prophet, they look in Genesis, they do two things. Number one, they prove that Muhammad is a false prophet. Why? Because Muhammad in the Quran, he said that his name will mention in the Bible as a, a guy, his name is Ahmad. Not Muhammad. And he should be mentioned in the New Testament, not in the Old Testament. This is the Quran. Chapter 61, verse number 6. Isa said, Isa said, Remember, Jesus, the son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah sent to you, confirming the law which came before me, and giving glad tidings of a messenger will come to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmed. Where is Muhammad? You want to tell me Ahmad and Muhammad is the same? No, it's not. Because if you say Ahmad, it means it's going to be Ahmad. And this is additional proof that Muhammad's name is not Muhammad. As you see, he had many names. Those are titles. They are not names. The real name of Muhammad is Qatham. Now, based on this verse, the only place Muhammad, his name should be appear, is going to be in the words of Jesus. And that should be in the New Testament. So why you are saying this is Genesis is about your prophet? What's wrong with Muslims? Are you trying to deny that your prophet said that in the Quran? Are you going to say to me this Quran is weak? If this Quran is weak, just say it. I understand. I mean, Quran is weak anyway. I'm not surprised really. I never saw a Quran is not weak. Have you? All the Quran is very weak. So the Muslims, because they are so desperate, trying to find a place for their prophet. They could not prove that their prophet is a prophet. So what they do? They try to find him in our book. They could not provide us a miracle of Muhammad, a prophecy of Muhammad. If we ask this guy, Naif, can you give me a prophecy in the Quran, Muhammad, he said, come to be true? Have you ever heard of a prophet? He have no prophecy. What kind of a prophet this prophet is? What is the problem? Why Muhammad is the only prophet who will not and he don't have a prophecy? His God is not capable of making one because his God is fake. So they could not prove to us Muhammad to be a prophet. So they start trying their best to give meaning of verses in the Bible that have nothing to do with Muhammad or Islam to make it about Muhammad. And same time, isn't it your prophet in the Quran? He said that the prophethood should be from the children of Isaac and Jacob. How do you explain to me? Is that a mistake here? Let us see. Hold on. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ كُلًّا هَدَيْنَا وَنُوحًا هَدَيْنَا etc. وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُ uh, Guys, this is, this is the childhood. This is the child, the children of Abraham. Read carefully with me. This is the Quran. Chapter 6, verse number 84. 
And here you will see the stupid Muhammad making the same mistake again. He's trying to convince the Jews that he's a Jew. So look what he said. We gave him Isaac in him who? Abraham. And Jacob, any Muslim can explain to me what happened to Ishmael? If there is any Muslim in the bushes, can tell me what happened to Ishmael? Where is Ishmael? What happened? Ishmael is the elder. Guys, do you see what I'm talking about? The hypocrite Muhammad, he knew that the Jews, they don't count Ishmael. And now he is speaking to the Jews. So in order to satisfy the Jews, he make a verse fit with the teaching and the belief of the Jews. Otherwise, I challenge anyone to tell me what happened to Ishmael. Anyone? Where is Ishmael? You want to tell me his name appeared in different verse? So why, why does it appear here? We gave him Isaac and Jacob. What about we gave him Ishmael? If I want to count my kids, I start counting from the elder. By order, I've been given the first son, the second son, the third son. Okay, where is Ishmael? Not only that. In different verse, the hypocrite Muhammad, who was a hypocrite to the Jews, just to get a close more to the Jews, he confirmed to them that all the prophets are from the children of Isaac and Jacob. Not only that, in chapter 19, verse number 49, it says that Isaac and Jacob are prophets of God. What is Ishmael? Guys, do you see it? Where is Ishmael? Why, why this guy he keep ignoring Ishmael? What happened here? If Ishmael is a prophet, according to Muslims, he's a prophet. So why Allah? What Allah? How Allah dropped the name of Ishmael here? And why consistently he keep, he keeps he keep dropping the name? Shouldn't you start by the elder? He should say, and we bestowed upon him Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob. Thank you very much. And we made each one of them a prophet. Remember here carefully, it says, and we made each one of them a prophet. Where is the prophet Ishmael? For simply, he's not a prophet. At that moment, you're a prophet acting as a scam back speaking to the Jews, trying to fool them, trying to make them believe he's a Jew. So he's agreeing with them and everything. The Jews don't 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 approve uh, uh, Ishmael to be a prophet. The Jews, they don't even count Ishmael. So Muhammad here is a dropping Ishmael in purpose for he is a hypocrite man being a hypocrite with the Jews. Not only that, we are not done. What happened to Naif? Naif is dead. The Quran confirmed that from the children of Isaac and Jacob, only the prophethoods. Chapter 29, verse number 27. Read it. And we gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and ordained among, among his progeny Prophethood and revelation. Do you see it? Where is Ishmael? Why Allah, you know, why Allah keep it dropping Ishmael? He don't respect him, he don't count him, he's no one. Why? Are you there, Abdul? So when a Muslim, he tried to find the name of his prophet in our book, that is a clear proof that the Muslim is desperate. He's a bankrupt. You know, when you are bankrupt, you start looking for your pennies. 
a book they don't approve they don't believe in and suddenly the book of Genesis is speaking about Muhammad and as long he mentioned Genesis chapter 15 and verse number 18 saying that this is about his prophet and that verse is speaking about that I will give you what is between the great river of Egypt which means the Nile River and the Euphrates let us see what Muhammad he said about those two rivers just uh, this you you brought this to yourself I mean what I can do this is your business look what Muhammad he said about those rivers According to your prophet, the Euphrates River and the Nile River are not in earth. <laughs> this is a prophecy. The Messenger of Allah, PBUH, said, Shihan and Jihan and Al Furat, Euphrates, and the Nile River are from the rivers of Jannah. What? Muhammad, he think that those are rivers in heaven. And you are telling me about the book of Genesis is speaking about the two, the great river of Euphrates and the river of, of, of Egypt. You're a prophet who have a PhD in geography. He got his PhD from Allah School University. He think that the Euphrates and the Nile River they are located in heaven and by the way this is true I took selfie once I wish I can show you the pictures I took selfie in the river of a Nile River and selfie in the Euphrates and they are true both of them they are in heaven you see what happened you when you mentioned to me something from the Bible my friend you open all the wounds and now now you need to bring a lot of bondage to put in the top of your prophet head and ass this is a prophet of God do you really Muslim believe when what Muhammad saying that the Nile River and Euphrates are the rivers of heaven and not only that Muhammad you have a prophecy but I don't want to change the topic but anyway we change the topic already hold on Muhammad he made a, he made he made the he made a prophecy, but look here guys before we continue I was raised to the lot tree hold on Lot tree. Yes, the Muslims they believe in the heaven. There's a tree and from that tree There's four rivers coming from it Two which are coming out and two is going in what the heck? Those who are coming out is the river of a Nile and Euphrates. Man, somebody call National Geographic, please. Because obviously, we have a big mistake in Google Earth, the maps, the satellite. I'm not changing the topic. This is about the Nile and Euphrates. Guys, isn't it, this is what he said? Aren't you the one who asked me about the book of Genesis chapter 15, 18? So if this is Muhammad, Muhammad have to be a prophet. In order to be a prophet, he had to say something nobody knows. And here we go, you're a prophet saying nobody knows things. There is two rivers coming from the tree of Allah in the garden of Allah. Read carefully with me. Muslim, they cannot say this is an earth. Look, it says I was raised. Do you see raised? He's going up heaven, 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 raised from heaven to heaven, six heavens. I was raised. We are not changing the topic. And I answer you about your topic. And how come that verse only is interesting for you? What about the rest of the verses? Only that verse will make, make Muhammad your prophet? Well, here we go. The promise of, of Genesis cannot go for Muhammad because simply Israel is there in the middle. And Lebanon is there in the middle. Don't you see it? Who is the president of Lebanon? Is a Christian guy. Who is the head of the intelligence in Lebanon? A Christian guy.
same time, you're a prophet. He speak about the Turkish. Do you know who is the Turkish? According to your prophet, the Turkish are funny people who look evil and look stupid. And they have a face like a hammer, as if somebody hit them by a hammer. Do you want me to show you the hadith? Let me show you the hadith. What Hariri? Even Saudi Arabia is in our hand. Qatar, Bahrain, Emirat, all of them. What is the biggest? Uh, who is the one protecting Qatar? USA. Who is the one protecting Saudi Arabia? USA. Which airplane is flying there? USA. Which ship protecting the Gulf? USA. Where, where are you? Who is the one fought in Iraq to stop? I, I just almost took took Baghdad. The Marines. This is the truth. Who is the one who stopped ISIS in Syria? The Russian. What is the Muslims? You control nothing. You don't even control your own country. So they could not find Muhammad in their book. They tried to find him in our book. Our book says whoever denied the, the son and the father is an antichrist. As simple as that. So you're a prophet is antichrist. This is what our book says. All right. Now look at this story here. Muhammad was taken up to heaven and he found the Nile River and the Euphrates River. And then he saw a river of milk. I mean, that's a good river. A river of milk. And a river of honey. I mean, this heaven must be like a stove because there's no way honey can run unless it is really evil hot. You know what I mean, guys? In order to make honey run like a river, this heaven must be so hot. And this is not a heaven. This is, must be an oven. How you can make honey run as river? Now, let us continue. Here Muhammad giving us another story of his pupu. As long as this guy he mentioned the Nile River, we, we, here we go. Two angels, they came to Muhammad. And they brought with them a dish. And this dish contained wisdom and faith. And they came with the mule, white animal. It's called Al-Buraq. Read, 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 read carefully. I was in a sleep stayed like almost asleep i heard someone says he is among the two person then he came to me and he took me with him then a golden passion containing the water of zamzam was brought to me and my heart was opened and such to such an part okay where they open his heart not the heart it says not you see here the translation is false not my heart my chest my chest in Arabic it says Sadri. All right. And then from such and such a person part, okay. What is such and a such? The hadith explained. He replied, I ask, I ask, uh, uh, Qutada said, I ask him who was with me, i.e., the narrator, and what meant by such and such part. He said, it means it was open up to the lower part of the abandonment. Like, what the heck? Allah is sending two angels to cut the chest of Muhammad from his throat to his balls. And what is the purpose? They want to wash inside Muhammad laundry. And then they want to install a dish of wisdom. And then... They brought a dish of wisdom and they installed it in the chest of the prophet. Do you see it? Faith and wisdom. In Islam, my friend, faith and wisdom need a plastic surgery. The Muslim, they say to us, if Allah, he wants to, to do something, he say, B is going to be. Well, obviously, Allah never did, said, said B and it was. Adam was not created by B. And he was go and read and laugh. Even Adam, he said to Allah, "Finish me before the sun set." You idiot. 
Adam was out worried that Allah might you know be late after the sunset and that will make him not to see correctly and will create him ugly and here you see Allah is is fixing the wisdom of Muhammad how he fix it he need to make a plastic surgery a question he installed faith and wisdom in the chest of the Prophet how you can install faith Muslims I want to have five kilograms of faith and seven kilograms of wisdom can I get those and you are worried about the book of Genesis you are not worried about the garbage your prophet saying brother what do you think about Genesis 15 this is must be about the prophet what about the prophet the the, the, the book of Genesis you speak about your prophet speaking about the, the ignorant ones and obviously your prophet is a, is, is a scam even his lies he didn't know how to lie look at this lie God he sent angels to install wisdom and faith why Muhammad he used to have no wisdom and no faith before his faith was not good his wisdom was horrible is that like a truck we open the trunk and we change the battery I mean what I can say must be true story by the way one of you asked me how come you are very knowledgeable I don't want to share this with everybody please keep it secret between us in YouTube Twitter and Facebook only please Jibreel and another angel they came to my house because I'm an Arab you know this things happen only to the Arab people like me so because I'm an Arab when I was in Arabia Jibreel and other guy I forgot his name I think his name is Fotros yeah Fotros you remember the story of Fotros I will tell you about it and they come to me and they check they cut from here to here uh, don't go down too much and they open my chest and then they wash it with the water of Zamzam I mean you can't wash it with different water no it had to be Zamzam my friend come on and then they brought a dish of gold made of gold full of wisdom and faith and this is why I am very knowledgeable. How I learned about Islam, the stupidity of Muhammad, because that's a surgery. Jibreel came to me and chopped my, uh, you know, and he installed wisdom and knowledge. How in the world people, they can believe in this garbage? A prophet of God saying to you that wisdom and faith installed in my chest by a surgery. Yeah, I have a more in my back. How do you know? <laughs> like Muhammad. Anyway, yeah, because you don't, you can't be a prophet unless you have a mole. I mean, obviously. Anyway, here the story is very funny. Muhammad is going to the heaven number six and the heaven number seven. Blah, 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 blah. Until we reach the seven heaven. I came to Ibrahim. What? He came to Ibrahim. Anyway, by the way, how Al Burak look like? Al Burak is the animal which have two wings. How he look like? Muhammad described. He said, Al Burak is a white animal. Hold on, hold on. Why he is a white animal? Cannot Muhammad fly in a black animal? Anyone knows why he have to be white? Let us see who is of you is the, is a super smart. And Allah installed a dish of wisdom inside his chest. Anyone knows why he has he is a white animal? Who knows? What is the reason behind white animal? Black is the devil, yes, but according to Islam. But you cannot enter the heaven of Allah unless you are white. And that goes to the animals as you see so this remember what this what the job of this animal is the limousine of Allah for transportation for his prophet so now he want to take him to heaven he cannot send him a black donkey or a black mule he have to send him a white animal 
And this animal is smaller than a mule and bigger than a donkey. Do you see the description? Obviously, this is a very true story. Uh, Naif, we did not try to change the story about your prophet. We did not. We are talking about your prophet. You are the one who asked me about Genesis. We answered you. We answered you, my friend. And your prophet, he said, Islam is started as a, a small religion and will end as a small religion. So what, how Muhammad can be having Euphrates? What do you say? Are you saying your prophet is a liar? So all the answer we give this Abdul, he is not satisfied why you are not answering, why you change the topic, we did not. And is Muhammad Abraham, is his name is Abraham? Just to show you guys how funny Muslims are. The chapter he's talking about, chapter 15, is speaking about God and Abraham. God is speaking to Abraham in a, in a vision, not directly. God said to Abraham, don't worry, Abraham, I'm going to give you a great reward. Abraham, in verse number two, says, oh God, how am I going to have a reward? And he don't ever have a, have a son to inherit me. So if we keep reading this chapter, who is the son which God he gave Abraham who would inherit him? Are you there, Abdul? It's Isaac. Because this is the legal wife he have. And this is the prayer he made when he is married to this woman. So if you want to read a chapter, read all of it, and then you will see that how funny you are, Muslims. Bankruptcy. How we can make Muhammad a prophet. Right? Uh... Anyway, let us go back to our topic where we stopped. We answered this Abdul, and this is how stupid Muhammad and how silly he is. The Nile and the river of Euphrates you are talking about, they are not even in this earth, according to your prophet. So if, if that verse is speaking about Nile River, then you have to ask yourself, the Nile River and Euphrates in heaven or in earth? The Bible speak about rivers in earth. Your prophet believed that the Nile and the Euphrates, they are not in earth. All right? So stop being a foolish person trying to find your prophet in our book. What are those two rivers, O Jibreel? This is Muhammad now is in the heaven. While he was in the nearest sky, he was in the nearest sky, he asked, what are those two rivers, O oh, Jibreel? Jibreel said, these are the source of the Nile River. This is all the source of the Nile River. <laughs> and then Muhammad, he, he continued up. He says, Jibreel took him around to seven heaven and behold, saw another river at the bank which there was a place built of pillars or pearls sorry and emerald he put his hand into the river and he found it mud like musk musk he said to jibreel jibreel what is this river he said this is al kawthar this is your river muhammad so why you are mentioning something will make your prophet look stupid and look like an idiot 
what kind of a prophet he say such a statement anyway let us go back to Ibn Kathir and love together about the flying carpet we subjugated to him the wind below blow gently uh, by his order which means the order of Sulaiman and this is the the wind was subjected to Sulaiman because he slaughtered his flying horse according to Muhammad all these stories by the way is coming from Muhammad Muslims they don't report things it is not coming and learned from their prophet the one who speak about something he claim just by saying it that this what it, this is what it is how he can confirm that this is what it is because this is what he learned from his prophet so this flying carpet it can fly by noon time the distance of one month journey so by morning it's a distance of a month journey and by afternoon a distance of a month journey so let us say in the, in the morning you decide to to uh, to fly anywhere so by noon time the morning will end by by like 10 10 30 the, the or the tradition so by that time you are in a different land which is uh, which is a month far away from the land you are coming from so this is a very high speed of flying carpet yet so man he can carry in the top of it all his kingdom ship and all the complete kingdom ship he have his weapon his army his, his animals everything and then the quran here speak about allah he gave suleiman the power to make shaitan dive for him and not only that shaitans they build for suleiman and look what the image what, what they build what they build they build palaces and in these palaces they made rooms with images actually it doesn't say images it says statues and here the muslim they say to us that the statues in islam is forbidden is that true this is absolutely false because as you see the quran confirmed that Allah he gave Suleiman the power over the shaitan and he command them to build for him to build what? Tamathil What Tamathil mean? Look at look with me at this word here. This is the word Tamathil That the first two letters here e a l l it's equal to the the in, in English you say the so the word Tamathil start from here. This is the word Tamathil. You can take a snapshot of the screen so you can compare it with the verse I will show you just after that. Actually, we can do that right now. Let us take a snapshot. All right. And then we will go to different verse in the Quran. Speaking about the same word, here we go. Tamathil. This letter here, wa, is the same as and in English. Wa. This is not part of the word. Like in Arabic, if you want to make a, a connection between two sentences, the same as and, you see this word, this letter here, wa. This is equal to end. This is not part of the word. So what they make for him, Mahariba Watamathil. Let us take a snapshot. Actually, let us open the other one. Other snapshot we took already. And we put it there. Do you see the, the two words? Do you see it? Tamathil, Tamathil, exactly the same word. Tama. Th 
feel I'm, I'm using the mouse you know I should get a tablet with pen will help us with our education so this is Tamathil and this is exactly Tamathil the same word now what is the difference between them nothing but in the verse here it says that Allah he gave Suleiman the power over the shaitan over the shaitan and what the shaitan they do they built for him tamathil what tamathil mean statues idols do you see it and this is a clear contradiction for what the muslim they say to us about islam Muhammad he destroyed 360 idols around the Kaaba this is a prophet of Allah Allah is blessing him by giving him power over shayateen which means sat satans and those satans they built by his command synagogues and statues any comment from the Abdul community? Do we have any comment from the Abdul community? No comment. Anyway, I'm not really planning to stay long today, but I think we cover, you know, we cover many, many issues and we cover many things. Uh, any, there is no way this anyone in the world he will watch my video any video and he will not notice that Islam is the most stupid religion in less than 15 minutes after watching it's impossible You do not need to be a genius to discover that this is a mad man religion flying carpet flying a mule slaughtering flying horse chickens who became a general in the army it, it's it's beyond fictions And you know the Muslim they keep saying Muhammad is from Ishmael. We we showed you that if Muhammad is from Ishmael, that will make him not a qualified to be a prophet. This is how stupid Islam is. You see, when Muhammad, when Muhammad he spoke about himself in the Quran, he he made him a, a, a fool of himself. The Quran say clearly that. The prophethoods are from the children of Abraham as Isaac and Jacob. This is where the prophethood is coming from. This is according to your prophet. All the verses we showed you, speaking of that. Read. Chapter 6, verse number 84. What happened to Muhammad? Story here. What happened? What happened to Ishmael? We gave him Isaac and Jacob. All three are guided. Three is which means Abraham. Where is Ishmael? And before him we guided Noah. And this is here. You 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 find how the flight of thought of Muhammad, speaking about Abraham, then going back to Noah, and then going back to David. And from his progeny, who? Guys, let us read together. David, Solomon, Job, Joseph, Moses, and Aaron. Where is the smell? Do you see it? What happened to Ishmael? Anyone can tell us what happened? Is Allah missing something here? Maybe he forgot?
Where is Ishmael? If a historian is writing, uh, you know, if I mention that Abraham, he have a children's, and I said he have a children, he have uh, Jacob, and he have Isaac, you guys will say to me, where is, well, we forgot about Ishmael. Because yes, he is his son. It doesn't matter if he is from the, you know, from the, the, the second wife or from the first one, it doesn't matter, he's a son. So what happened? Why you, why you dropped him? What happened? What is the purpose? Why Allah, he dropped the name of Ishmael and he dropped his name in many places not only here like it's all over the Quran he mentioned his name a different verse but as you see here this is very important because he is speaking about guy speaking about those who they are guided who is the one is guided guys read carefully with me we have gave him Jacob Isaac and Jacob and all are guided who is all Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Where is Ishmael? So Ishmael is not cannot be the one from the guided one. This is a very dangerous statement. Only those three are guided. Aren't you missing somebody? Are you saying Ishmael was a kafir? Why they are the only one is guided? And then why he is counting only the Jews? What happened to Allah? He jumped to Noah before him, and then he go back to his children. David, Solomon, Job, Joseph, Musa, and Aaron. Where is Ishmael? Again? And then he count, he continued counting, and Zechariah, and John, and Jesus, and Elias. Now he go, he says, and Ishmael. Why Ishmael is here? <laughs> Any Muslim can tell us why Ishmael is in the wrong location? Shouldn't he be with Abraham and his children? Do we have any Muslim in the text when explain to us? No, no, don't don't block this guy, uh, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad. Don't let him let him post. I want to see what he was posting so we can laugh. And now we continue. Read carefully. Chapter 12, verse number 38. And I follow the ways of my fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses was following who? The ways of his fathers. Who was following the ways? Who is the children of Ishmael? Why in the Quran there is nowhere it says that Muhammad is from Ishmael? You know why Allah is so much interested to tell us about the children of Adam, name them one by one, count them one by one, and then suddenly Muhammad nowhere mentioned in the Quran that he is from Ishmael. What happened? Any Muslim have an idea? Who is a Muslim can help us? As you see the Quran, keep talking about children of etc., children of Israel, my fathers and my brother. Uh, Abraham and uh, and uh, uh, even Jesus is from Abraham. Uh, even uh, Moses from Abraham. Even Jacob from Ab so. Why Muhammad is not talking about Muhammad being from Abraham? Any Muslim?
because we need to you know we need to question if the Quran keeps speaking about who is the son of who obviously this is important otherwise it's not going to be mentioned what is important to mention to me that uh, uh, Abraham you have Isaac and Jacob why you are telling me about them what about just telling me okay there's a prophet his name is Jacob a prophet his name is Isaac a prophet his name is Abraham wonderful why we need to know the story of the wife of Abraham and etc and suddenly when we speak about Muhammad there's no nothing in the Quran about him if you search in the Quran you will find the name of Muhammad appear in a very funny way no details whatsoever about him you cannot find in the Quran who is Muhammad who is his father nothing the name of Muhammad appear in the Quran in four places none of those verses chapter 3 verse 144 chapter 33 verse number 40 and chapter 47 verse number 2 and then 48 29 but none of those verses say to us who is Muhammad who is his father what is his story who is it why in the Quran we need to know all the details about Abraham about Mary and Jesus about the 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 the, the, the Pharaoh and his wife why we need to know about Joseph and the women why we need to know all those but there's nothing about Muhammad who's Muhammad Muhammad was not the father of any of your men okay who is Muhammad anybody can tell us who is Muhammad how the Muslim they say to us Quran is a perfect book but the Quran fail even to tell us who is the prophet we are talking about who is Muhammad why in the Quran says Abraham his father is Azar I mean have you ever heard of somebody is Azar his father is Azar Azar in Aramaic mean foolish stupid how how that can be Do we have any Muslim? Same time, guys, there is something very important in the Quran. You see, the Quran is the, the best book to bust Islam. The best book to bust Islam is the Quran. When the Muslim they say Ishmael, he went and he built the Kaaba. Is that correct? If we go right now and search, let me do that. Hold on. I will search in a Prophet Google, peace upon him. I will show you the screen in a second. Let us switch to English. And I will go only to Islamic website to show you what the Muslims they teach. Actually, even the Quran it says that. Why I want to go to uh, you know, but even in the Quran it says that the uh, the Kaaba was built by Abraham. But let us see what Muslim website says as long as we are here. Okay. Let us see. Mm. 
Let us go to Ibni Kathir. Read carefully with me, please. Building the Kaaba. Building the Kaaba. Who is the one who built the Kaaba? You will see the following. And this is what the Muslims believe. Chapter 3, verse number 96, speaking about building the Kaaba. Okay. And here it says, chapter 2, verse 125. And we commanded Ibrahim and Ishmael that they should purify my house for those who are scrambling it or staying or bowing or prostrating themselves. So this is confirmed that Abraham, he was there. Let us continue. And, uh, you know, do this, etc., for the Kaaba. And then here, it's just describing about what they did. Okay, let's go then to verse. Let us go to 32, verse number three, which is speaking about that, about within the Kaaba. Actually, it's not about building the Kaaba, sorry. It's about busting the one who built the Kaaba. In here, in this verse, we will see, we will find something very, very stupid Muhammad, he said. As long the Muslims confirm that Abraham and Ishmael, they went in the Kaaba and they purified the Kaaba and even the Quran is speaking about building the Kaaba. Then, how the Quran say in chapter 32 verse number three that the first one who came to be a warner for the Arab was Muhammad if Ishmael is an Arab and Abraham and Ishmael they came to Mecca if Muhammad he confirmed that Ishmael he learned Arabic from the Arab So how Muhammad is the first messenger for the Arab? And not only that, Ishmael, he was in Mecca and Muhammad was in Mecca. Let us go to chapter 32. I don't like this website here sometime. Okay. You have to scroll down. You cannot go directly to the... There we go. Chapter 32, verse number 3. Or do they say, he has forged it. So that you see the, the Muslims, they say that uh, the Quran was a miracle, right? They say it was a miracle, and the, the Quran challenged the Arab to make something like this. But the but the Arab they were laughing at it. They say this is a forgery. You know what I mean? Look at that. This is a forgery. If it's a miracle, nobody would say it's a forgery. If it, it's a lame, it's a stupid. It's a, it's a very clear. It's it's a forgery. So this is a forgery. Nay, the truth is from the Lord. That thou mightst admonish the people who have, have whom no warners has come to them or come before thee to them. Do you see it? There's no warner. And those people, they never have a warner before you. But this is a very stupid statement. 
for many reasons. Number one, as we mentioned, that they believe that Ishmael and Abraham was there in the Kaaba, and they are the one who built the Kaaba. They are the one who built the Kaaba. So how you say to me, there is no warner? And we are talking about the Prophet, the Muslim, they claim that he is the father of Muhammad, or the grandfather, which is Ishmael. They say Ishmael was an Arab. Okay, Ishmael was an Arab, but the Arab have no warner before Muhammad. Ishmael is the one who built the Kaaba, and the Arab have no warner before Muhammad. That is a stupid statement. Additional to that, the Quran confirmed that in his life there was what he called Nasara, which the Muslim they called them the Christians and Jews around Muhammad. So what do you mean they have no warners? All of us, we knew that the Christians, wherever they go, they preach the gospel and they invite people to believe in Jesus. You know what I mean? And the story of building the Kaaba is very funny. Every Islamic book have different story. Some they say the first one who built the Kaaba it was the angels, and then Allah He sent down Adam in India in Bombay. Actually, it's not Bombay; it is a, a city exists in Sri Lanka now. And He went all the way to. Uh, Mecca. You know, if we if we go on this and check the story about Sri Lanka, let me let me try to find the map of Sri Lanka just to show you the madness of the Muslims. Or first, let me let me show you what the Muslim says about this. Let us search for it. Adam was in Okay, read with me, please. This is an article in a Muslim website. It's called Islam Land, Islamic Landmark. Islamic Landmark. This is not my website. This is a Muslim website, as you see. All right. And this is supposedly the footstep of Adam because Adam's footstep was so big. I mean, ask me. Very, very huge. But this guy here is a Buddha. Ah. So there's a connection between the Buddha and the Muslim somehow. Let us see what's happening. This is the footprint measuring 5.7 by 2.5.6 foot. Prophet Adam, peace upon him, who was said to be 60 cubit tall. And this is what Muhammad said, not was said. And this is explained why his footprint is so big. By the way, why he have a footprint print in the in the ground in the rocks? I mean, it doesn't make sense. I mean. Let us say he was 60 cubit tall. Is that will make a footprint in the rocks? Eh, madness. Continue. And then they say, in the opening of some scars, that when Adam uh, was taken from paradise and placed in this world, he landed in Sri Lanka. He landed where? In Sri Lanka. The Buddhists believe that the footprint to be the the, the of, of Buddha and the place of worship as shown above. So this is a this is a temple for the Buddha, the Muslim trying to hijack it. Claiming fiction stories saying this is however both of them they are fiction stories, but obviously this is the land of the Buddha people. They are the one before uh, Islam there. So now by fiction story saying that Adam was landed there. Now that that's it. Sri Lanka became their land. Now this is Sri Lanka. This is Sri Lanka. 
if we go to Sri Lanka map you are forcing me to open Google Earth again unbelievable Sri Lanka right yeah and by the way that explain a lot of things about Islam that Islam have the roots with the with the with the Hindus the black stone the Muslims they worship they kiss they believe it's a holy stone the Hindus they have the same and they, it is a sexual stone too Let us go to Sri Lanka. A trip, a free trip to Sri Lanka. Here we go. What is really amazing that Adam was able to cross the middle of the ocean alone. I remember at that time, there's no ship. There's no, don't tell me that Adam he built a ship right away. You have no kids, you have just by himself. He built a ship and he crossed the ocean. Or maybe he went here in this area. But I don't know, is that area? Is, I think this area is covered by water. It's not really, it's, it's a water, it's not a land. Right? It's not a pure water. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not, uh, I've never been there. But I, as you see in the road here, the road is stopped in this area. Let us see if we can do make a landing down in the ground here here we go we can do so we can see the area here uh we cannot yeah we can but now we are confused about where to go which direction is it in the back it's in the front I like those villages. I, you know, I, this is really beautiful, peaceful as long there is no Muslims there. Otherwise, second day you will hear somebody saying takbir. Let us attack the neighbor. They are Buddhas. I, 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 like I'm trying to find out if this is here. I don't want to keep going because we might be even going in the wrong direction. Yeah, let's try to. Maybe we can land here. No. But anyway, if you zoom in. See, there's no road here. There's the ocean. That's it. This is not really a road. Here is disconnected. There's small islands. So Adam, he was in Sri Lanka. And then he crossed from the end of the world to go to Mecca. Now, where is Mecca located? Where is Mecca located? Guess where is Mecca located? Anybody can find Mecca for me? I'm trying to make it all in one image. All right. So now Adam, he have to fly. Maybe he's using a flying mule from Sri Lanka all the way to Mecca. Ooh. In order to do that, he have to build a boat and cross from Sri Lanka to India, to countries after countries after countries after countries after country after country, Iran, India, Pakistan, blah 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 blah, blah, blah. and then he go all the way to Saudi Arabia and then he arrive here. It must be a true story. However, Adam came to Mecca. At that time, there was no people. So we can give an excuse to say, before you, there's no warners. Because when he came to Mecca, there was only 40,000 angels waiting for Adam to do Hajj. And Adam, he did Hajj. How many times? Anyone remember? He did Hajj 40 times. 40 times. Muhammad, again, there's some numbers. He stuck with them, like number 7, 73, 40, etc. So Adam, he did 40 times Hajj during his lifetime. And I believe this is the most silly, stupid thing. Because if you have to do Hajj 
and this is a holy place and by saying that Adam he have to go back to Sri Lanka and come back to Mecca and go back to Sri Lanka and come back to Mecca and go back to Sri Lanka and come back to Mecca why I mean what about moving to Mecca and live there especially if you know that the Muslims believe that Allah when he sent down Adam he did not send down with him Eve Eve was dropped in different location she was dropped in Yemen where in Yemen okay so why Adam is going back to Sri Lanka You know what I mean? And do you see how far the trip is? If you have my book, then you won, the last one, Six and Allah, you will see that the black stone is a sexual stone. According to the Muslims hadith and interpretation The black stone became a black because of the sin of mankind. What sin they are talking about? Before Islam the Arab they used to place the woman she put her hand over her vagina when she have her period and Then she placed it inside the black stone and Then after that the men they will come and they will push their penis inside the black stone and They wrap it with the blood of the women what is the purpose of this? Women who cannot have babies, they go do that. She is asking Allah to fertilize her. The black stone present the God of sexuality, present the vagina God. So this is a very, pra very sexual practice, which you know the, the the Hindus don't do that. You know we don't. We, you know the, the Hindus don't do that. But the Hindus they have a black stone too. Which present the private part of the male and the private part of the female, and it's a black too. And now, knowing that Adam, according to Islam, is coming from India, and looking at the way the Muslims they do Hajj, how they shave their hair, how they wear a clothes with showing one shoulder, exposing one shoulder and hiding the other shoulder, that will lead us to a lot of similarity between the Hindus and Islam. And I believe strongly that the majority of the belief of Islam is coming from the Hindus, specifically when we speak about the Kaaba and the Black Stone. And the rest is from other religion, like Christianity, Buddha, sorry, Christianity, Judaism, and the Sabian. Do we have any Muslim have a complaint? Anyone? Otherwise, you tell me why Allah He sent Adam to to. Uh, uh, if Allah He want Adam to go to Mecca, why He send him to uh, to India and Sri Lanka? Not even. Uh, I mean, it's very hard for him to come. Sri Lanka is an island. What? Why there? Why not China? Maybe Allah He don't have a GPS. He send him in the long. Maybe He send him by the parachute. Allah, he dumped him over Mecca, but the parachute took him all the way to Sri Lanka. What is the distance, straight line between Mecca and Sri Lanka? Let us see. Let us see. I will take... You see, we cannot go in direct line because that means Adam, he was. Uh, actually, I have, we have to take a direct line. Let us draw it in a different way. Anyway, let us make a direct line. It's, it's, you know, it's not worth it. So if we make a direct line between Sri Lanka and Mecca, Direct line like if you are using an airplane which is going straight which is impossible by the way because even airlines 
cannot go in direct lines. There is ways they have to follow. So this is the direct line, and this is 4,620 kilometers. If not direct, that the distance will be double because you have to go all the way here. This is a 3,000, and then from here, To Mecca. This is additional 3,300 something. So total like 7,000. Kilometer. 7,000 kilometer. What Adam was using for transportation. How long is going to take him to, 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 to go through. And then he have to go back and he have to walk the same distance. The whole story is stupid. And there is no proof of anything. I mean, the Muslims always, they have stories. You know, the funny, when you say to them, Jesus is God, they say to you, okay, prove it to us. And we show them, and we, et cetera. Until now, there's miracles happening in the name of Jesus. When it's come to their prophet, there's no requirement of anything. Any story Muhammad said, this must be true. How you can believe in this, this garbage? Especially from a person who believes that there is a flying carpet and flying mule, and you know, it's not a metaphorical thing, it is literally a person who believes that the black dog is the devil, a person who imagined himself having sex, but in fact, he never did. How he can be trustworthy to be a prophet? Imagine if you have a witness in the court. And then you provide the judge with evidence that this witness, he imagined things happening. The judge will refuse him right away. According to the Muslims and the wife of Muhammad, the prophet, he imagined himself doing things he never did, including having sex. Which means even sex, which always cannot, you cannot do it alone. I mean, you cannot have sex alone. If you have a sexual things, but it's not, you are not with someone, this is not sex. This is a different thing. Muhammad, he imagined himself having sex with his wife, but in fact, he did not. This is how far this man going with his madness. The same as the story we showed you, that he was cursing the devil who he tried to catch him during the prayer. A prophet, he cannot even be accepted to be a witness for his own sexual activities. Muhammad imagined himself, the prophet continued for such and such period, imagining that he has slept, had sexual relationship with his wives, and in fact, he did not. How we can take this person seriously? In different hadith, they confirm that this is not only about sex, this is about everything. Muhammad, he imagined himself doing things. In fact, he never did. Never did. And look what the Muslims trying to fix it. They make it a blind. Look what they say. Once the Prophet was bewitched so that he began to imagine that he had done a thing which in fact he did not. So now we have a confirmation that Muhammad was a bewitched man. I don't believe in such a garbage, but you are confirming to me that Muhammad is under the control of the devil. This is what bewitched me. The devil, he got hold in him. And when Muhammad, he was bewitched, how many order he made is coming from the devil? How many statements he said coming from the devil? Because remember, he is bewitched. This guy is obviously 
he lost his mind he imagined himself doing things but in fact he did not so his his imagination went not only for what he you know like uh, seeing a dream he's talking about action even his action is imagination so how muhammad can be a prophet of god when he is under the black magic I don't believe in black magic. I believe it's stupid. Somebody will say to me, the Bible speak about magic. This is what people, they think. Like the story of Moses, they think that this is his magic because they are magician. But Moses did not do magic. Moses is doing a miracle for God. Jesus did not do magic. Jesus was doing a miracle. So how we can trust this man who is under the authority of the shaitan? Any Muslim can answer? If you if we I, if I say right now to a Muslim, you are following the bewitched prophet, the Muslim will get upset. Is that correct? If we say, if we start calling Muhammad the bewitched prophet, the Muslims will be upset. Why are you upset? Here we go. This is your book. And the one is saying that is the wife of the of your prophet, Aisha. Why are you upset? So Muslims, why you follow a bewitched prophet? Yeah, I paid money from Vatican, right, right. And I can pay from the Mossad too. But still you can't answer my question. The Siri Abdul, they cannot they cannot answer. Christian Prince, you pay money from Vatican. Christian. You don't even know how to say the word. Yeah, the Vatican sent me every month. Uh, and the Pope, he was just uh, speaking to me two days ago. And can you answer me about the bewitched prophet? Here we go. We answered you now. So are you going to give me an answer? Why Allah he allowed his prophet to be bewitched, controlled by the devil? Everybody will pay me money. What's your problem? Welcome. Money is welcome. No problem. I'm, I, am, I am better than Muhammad? No. Muhammad is better than me as a prophet of Allah, right? Muhammad in the Quran said, anyone want to see Muhammad in a private consultation, you have to pay him. Do you want me to show you the verse? Do you want me to show you the verse? You get a prophet, he will not even talk to you unless you pay him first. Before you talk to him, you have to pay him. Why is that Dr. Muhammad the clinic? Read it. Chapter 58, verse number 12. Oh, who you believe when you consult with the messenger in the private spend something in charity before your private consultation hey people if you want to consult with a Christian prince spend something we have a donation website please who want to have a private consultation with me <laughs> I never I never charge people for private consultation your prophet does for he is all just about money and sex people they make donation they are free to make donation they don't have to it's for free everybody can join my program the one who make donation and the one who don't make donation is welcome including you did you make donation to me there we go i'm doing consultation sharing with you the most important things i accomplish in my life which is knowledge for free your prophet will not share with you anything unless you pay him first. What do you say? Huh? Any Abdul? You are very serious. You offend Muslim man. I offend Muslim man. What you can do about it? I offend Allah. 
Your prophet is a child molester. What you can do about it? You offend Muslim man. Is that my worry? Do you think a guy who is making fun of Allah and Muhammad all day long, he care if he offend the Muslims or not? You offend yourself when you believe in such a garbage. You believe that a prophet, he, he, he have the right to sleep with the children and you are not offended? You believe that a man can have sex with six years old girl and you are not offended? And now you are offended because of me? Any Abdul? Any Abdul? Do we have any Abdul? Hello? If there is any Abdul, let me know. I will be happy to help you. Free consultation. I charge nothing. You pay nothing. It is totally for free. And you might even get a shirt, a shirt, it says any Abdul. What do you say? I mean, seriously, the first time I saw those pictures, I don't know who of you is doing that. You know, send me the pictures of the shirts and look like they became more popular. And they are asking me, some of you asked me, like, can we come, where we can buy it from? I'm not the one who did that. I have no idea. Don't ask me. But I'm thinking to print some uh, some shirts and, and and sell them in Amazon. Any Abdul, right? I think that would be a great idea. And this guy, he make uh, he made the. Uh, this is an additional shirt. Christian Prince. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so do we have any Abdul? Any objection for what we said? No? All right, guys. I think we are done today, and we close with any Abdul. I hope we did learn something good for today. Um, I'm not sure if tomorrow I will do broadcast, but properly maybe no. We will make it Friday. Um, and again, remember, uh, soon I will leave the country, I will leave the state, and I will do my best to do live broadcast, but if not, then I will make videos and pause them, because simply the computer I have with me is not, um, you know, I, I purchased something, I will try it, and I will receive it this coming Friday. I will see if it's really good uh, for the money I spend to do live broadcast, if it can handle or it can make uh, editing videos. If not, then we will see if we can do it overseas. So I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And uh, subscribe and stay in touch. And always we will make videos. Even when I am overseas, you will see a video of mine posted in the Arabian Prophet account, in this account, and other accounts. And the best way to uh, to get updated with what uh, what's going on, um, as you see, we have the website, patreon.com. You can subscribe there, and you can subscribe to the, our Facebook uh, and the Twitter, um, so you will be informed immediately. And don't forget minds.com. Uh, let me show you the minds.com all right here this is our facebook address slash the christian prince and this is minds.com slash christian prince and this is twitter Christ, christ is the one and then number one and for sure battery on which you see in the screen already
so subscribe and be with us always so you can be updated and uh, I hope things will get better and better and I will hear more and more news from Muslims leaving this cult for what is better and there's no better name under the Sun or in heaven better than his name that is my Lord the Messiah he is not the Lord of maybe he is the Lord of sure his promises is a true promise his miracles are real he is alive and even the cult of Islam witness for that he is the living Lord right now in heaven and every man either dead or will die every human being but the Muslims yet witness that every human being die including their prophet except one name his name is the Messiah the Christ the King of the Kings the Alpha and the Omega the truth and the resurrection even the false prophet Muhammad he could not resist to call Jesus the Spirit of God he could not resist to say that Jesus is the Word of God for he is the Word the Messiah is God in flesh the Word of God the walking talking living Word of God this is who is the Messiah and by him and for him everything was created he commit no sin he commit no crime he taught he taught love and mercy he did not say I came with terror I've been victorious by terror as Muhammad he ordered us to be peacemakers he said bless those who make peace he wanted us to be a forgiving and loving not to be people of anger and hatred and this is what mankind they need for better future that is what we need one sentence of the teaching of Christ is better than reading all the books in the words to have a better ethic which is love your enemy imagine if every human being practice such a word love your enemy all the books all the human rights all the laws all the police they will not be needed for everybody loving everybody and people have no more enemies because you cannot have an enemy when you love your enemy we are in a very troubled world because we are not following the teaching of Jesus love your enemy if you can bring me better teaching than the teaching of Christ I'm all listening and I challenge you to do so thank you very much for being here and may the Lord bless you and I will see you soon again Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon again